So I've been, I've been playing a lot of games, and I wanted to give my opinion on a few of them. Some that I've played and I had really strong reactions to. Signal Ops. Now, I, re I, I realized, I felt like I played it for like three hours. Evidently, I only gave it not even two, barely two hours. S Steam now has a, uh, a review system up. Instead of recommendations, now the reviews, you can say thumbs up or thumbs down on the game. I don't like doing that. I don't like unless the game unless the game is in my eyes almost really. really it has to. Be, I have to be really comfortable with it. That's pretty much. I have to have played it all, pretty much all the way through, and I'm really comfortable with it. Whether or not I want to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and I really, I really don't like to slag on the game too much. Well, so unless you're Final Fantasy, anyway. So I want to talk about Signal Ops, which was a game. Um, Originally, I did a video on it, and I got so upset, and I was going to just post it, but I realized, you know, I'm sandbagging this game. This game really isn't at all that bad. Uh, it, do, it it needs some tweaks, for sure, but it's not... It, it, it didn't deserve me, like... Because if I released this video, you wouldn't have touched this game. You're like, what? What is this? You know? Anyway, Signal Ops... Now, I was fooled. Well, I wasn't fooled. They didn't fool me. I just didn't realize. I fell for it. Well, it's a game where you, you're an agent, or you're you're like an ops commander, similar to Phelps in uh, Mission Impossible, and you control like a I think up to four field agents, or two or three. Uh, I never even made past the first level. I don't even know if you command anymore. There's a three player mode or something like that where you can play. You you start off with um, the radio guy, a engineer, and a um, and a spy. But I never I never tried the spy. It's a stealth game. And I thought, wow, this is a pretty novel idea. It's first person, everything. I, I don't know of a mission, you know, a game like this. It, evidently, this game's been out for for a while. It's Commandos. It's essentially Commandos. And if you haven't played Commandos, um, you're in for a ride because this crap is hard. Th these type of games are hard. They're straight up stealth, and that's it. If there's combat, you're not really meant to do it. It's almost like Milgar Solid. Imagine if Metal Gear Solid never never emphasized on combat like the the later ones kind of did. They they kind of catered more towards if you want to blow blow stuff up, you kind of could. Though at though at its heart, it still was a stealth game. But but a lot this one is almost like a callback to Commandos, to where I don't know stealth games nowadays and a lot of games nowadays, especially with uh, Halo and um, boy, I can't really think of any other. Like I said, Metal Gear Solid, how it evolved. Those two games, they they started making, they started catering to a more casual audience, which which games before it like um, like say Doom and uh, Commandos, they didn't. I mean, they were like, you better put on your big boy pants and get ready for work. You know, this game has none of the tropes that would make a stealth game remotely playable. I would, <laughs> I hate to be that harsh, but um, this game um. I'll give you a good example. And in a lot of stealth games, like stealth, like Tenchu, Stealth Assassins, how you would you lean around the corner, you can kind of see around it. It kind of breaks the rules. You know, you can kind of lean, and you can see around the corner. This game, when you lean, enemies see you. They're like poof. And there, there, there were so many times when during my first filming, I wish I kept it for this moment. Every time I leaned, there was an enemy out there to look at me, and they caught me. I thought, you know, that is so. Imagine if you're watching a Mission Impossible movie. This is what I get about realism. Like, realism is okay to a point. Some things you you just really have to throw out the window. Like, imagine if you're watching Mission Impossible, and Ethan hunts on this really important mission. All of a sudden, you know, because, you know, real life people get sick. Imagine if he comes out with about a diarrhea. So he has to stop his mission, and you have to watch him take a crap for about 30 minutes. You know, you see what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure it happens in real life, but do you really have to insert it? And then this one, every time I looked around the corner, I was caught. And this game dabbles between, oh, well, that's realistic. Okay, well, you're going to get me. Okay, well, that's realistic, Mr. Miles. You know, looking around the corner, you know, you should be able to see somebody. Well, then, in this game, you take a few shots. You could take about four or five shots before you die. Okay, okay, well, let's, let's say realistically, yeah, if you're wearing body armor, you probably could. There's some instances where you'll be charging at an enemy, and you you'll know you'll survive this encounter. You you might get shot, maybe, 
but you know you survive this account and then your guy just gives up like he, your enemy you'll run that enemy with at, who's who's got you a gunpoint and your guy will just give up he'll just throw up his hands he'll become frozen it's like freeze tag you could freeze tag your enemies and like if you come up behind me you double tap the space bar it's really weird double tapping the space bar is really weird you double tap the space bar and you could freeze people or you can unfreeze your guys if they've been held up which is which is really cool but that's really the only cool thing about this game, that and the, the radio system. You have a radio system where your radio man has to go from electrical out socket to electrical socket, hooking up these like transmitters and plugging in his radio, and the radio feeds you the information you need in order to be able to see everything. And if you go out of range and your screen turns into static, that's really cool. The fact that you're an agent looking at these guys is really cool, but so far it hasn't really... Again, I only play this game for two hours. I really... It shows some potential. Like, imagine if you being the agent on the outside could call for additional support for your friends inside the game. That'd be cool if you were the agent, you were telling your friends, relaying them information as to what to do and where to go. Similar to Artemis, uh, Battleship Simulator or something like that. That would be really nice. That's what I'm saying. This game has potential to be good. It needs some tweaking for sure because the AI is really weird. Uh, another another trope is that your enemies are able to see you through, through fences. And these fences in this game, are they're really easy. I mean... There's no excuse. These fences are really crap. You could totally see right through them. But in other games, you wouldn't be able to see through the fences. The fences would be to let you see what's going on without them seeing you, to give you a chance. There's just one point where there's so many guards around this one point. I think I'm supposed to go there to pick up an item. But there's just so many guards there that... And then when, every time you mess up, you have to start all over again. I don't know if there's a save system in between. If there is, you're going to be saved... It's going to be XCOM. You're going to be save loading a lot with this one to experiment and try to um, try to lock, or try to freeze people and try. To... It's crazy. Oh yeah, and by the way, they give you a gun. I have no idea why they give you a gun. You are you are so not to meant to fire this gun. If you fire one round, you have everyone on you, and they know exactly where you are. And everyone, there's there was a time where I fired my gun to kill one guy, and I, I escaped, or I thought I did. Around around the corner, there was eight dudes with their guns pointed at me. I was, <laughs> it was crazy. It was like, well, why even give me a gun? Why just don't even give me a weapon? Don't give me that that illusion that I could do anything. And I, I didn't really give all that much of a chance. I know there's some potential. There's potential in this game. Playing with multiplayer is almost. I'd almost say necessary. There's no reason to play this game by yourself. If you're playing a game by yourself, play Commandos. I mean, if you really, if you if you played Commandos before, um, I'd rather play uh, Monaco. Monaco is just it's better all around, in my opinion. The classes are much more defined. Uh, they make more sense too. The engineer being able, the only one being able to unlock lock picks, being the engineer, really doesn't make sense to me. Like. Engineer, I would imagine, it'd be somebody who could fix things. Or, and to an engineer not being able to use a radio seems pretty weird to me. Like, wouldn't it, wouldn't that be, you know, wouldn't that be in the engineer's field? I imagine the spy, like the spy, being able to lock pick, that would make sense. Though I would, I would imagine every field agent would know how to lock pick a lock. I mean, that's just acquired no, That's like knowledge, like being able to jumpstart a car or change a tire. That's a field agent 101 thing. Game Dev Tycoon. Now, what I hear, this game is a knockoff of another game that was on the iOS store. Yeah, I like this game a lot. What I liked about it was, I guess the thrill of like, when you make a game, when you make a game is figuring out like whether or not the reviewers are going to like it. That's really exciting Like to see, oh my gosh, is this game going to be really, is this game going to kick ass or what? You know, making making your like first nine, nine, uh, nine or was it point nine it's, it's a rating system of like like one to one to ten you could go up to 11 it's it's just so exhilarating to like make a game and have it go you know just wait for it wait for people to buy it see how much money you can make and making a bunch of money and becoming like a super super like game developer and everything it it takes it takes what happened in the real world like it gives you a real world history lesson of like what, what really abridged a short lesson of like the game consoles and what order they came in and actually what happened like in the for example when you first start when you first start off i think you you could only produce games for like the well a knockoff of the commodore 64 and the pc and at the beginning the, the commodore 64 is kind of trouncing everything but if you know the history you kind of know what's going to happen that's really fun it does skip a lot of consoles i believe it skips to the game boy advance 
I believe I think it goes from Game Boy to DS or something like or, or no I think it does do the, the events. There's a lot of games that skips like Neo Geo doesn't make an appearance in a 3DO, but the the big the big three are always there. What I don't like is how if you're gonna there's one point I really wish they didn't keep in the game, in 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 terms of the history. Well, they skipped. I know they skipped the Game Boy console. I can't remember what it was. They skipped a bunch of other consoles. But then they go into detail. Well, not, not too much detail, but like detail enough about how the Xbox One had the DRM issue. And I thought, that's get over it. That's, that's so silly. Because if you're going to mention that, there's a lot of things they could have mentioned. Like, for example, the Sega Saturn being released like almost instantly at E3 when they announced it at E3 and all of a sudden it was out. And, and they pissed off everyone. They cut that out. The Virtual Boy, they left that. Sh- they, have, they left that out. The Wii. I don't think in this universe the Wii, the Wii counterpart. I don't think it has the bigger market share in the, in this universe. It goes up to PlayStation Five, um, kinda. It goes up to the ninth generation, like tongue in cheek. You can make your own console too if you want to. You can make your own MMO. You can make your own gaming convention. It's it's not that deep of a game, but it's deeper than you think. For the price tag, it's pretty it's pretty decent, I would say. A very fun game. It's a nice time killer. Lord of the Rings: War in the North. I came to a realization while I was playing these types of games, and it hit me around about the time I bought Borderlands 2, about Borderlands 2 and Torchlight 2, and I realized I'm not into Diablo clones. Why aren't I into Diablo clones? Well, my biggest pet peeve is the gear. It's I really don't like how the gear is structured in most of these games. I really don't like how every five minutes you're looking in your bag to see what new stuff you've got. It really drives me nuts. I don't like how you have to look in your bag every five minutes to look at your gear, and you and then you have to decide, oh well, which is better, this one or that. I, it drives me nuts. It, this is what you're wasting my time. And for a dia- see, that would be decent in a heavy ass RPG where you're you're thinking all the time. Not for not for an action RPG like Diablo. I I don't care for that. And this game this game does that not as bad as I would say. Border- Borderlands is borderline ridiculous. <laughs> Get the pun. Anyway. Borderlands is fucking every step you take you're comparing guns. Every step. This is a fun game, but there, there but like I said there's this game is it's so it's it's you you wouldn't believe how archaic it is. And that this game is I think it was released 2012. Either way, if this game was released in 2009, is this this would be ridiculous what I'm about to tell you is that one is that when you're comparing gear, you can't compare it if you see if you know what I mean. When you when you're picking out gear, you have to memorize what gear you're wearing. What what good that is? There is a compare button, I believe, when you're buying gear, but not for gear that you already have. You can't see what you're wearing and compare that to what you what you're comparing it to. That's really annoying. That's so so goddamn annoying. The other gripe is, and I don't know if you've heard that, you probably find out soon enough, is that when you're playing multiplayer, you, you're kind of forced to use your microphone. Not forced, but if you don't have a microphone, you can play it. If you do have a microphone, this game forces you to use it. I mean, you can't you can't mute it in the game. You can't turn it off in the game. There's no button for it. It's always on. It's always broadcasting. The only way you can mute yourself is either unplug your mic microphone or press a mute button on your microphone. That's the only way. Um, it, it's 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 really ridiculous, and the sound quality you get from that is really subpar too. But it's really goofy how you just you, you have to rely on that stuff. There's no way to turn it off, and like I said, there's no way to compare gear. It feels like it's this is like we've been doing this for the action RPGs have been out forever, for decades. Diablo One came out what 1995? I mean, we're almost 20 years in this, and it's it's at least you're four, you're 18, or at least or you're let's say 15 for this game. I don't know why why is it that you can't turn off your microphone. You can't compare gear. The AI in this game is okay, but here comes my biggest gripe: is that when you're playing co-op in this game, and a lot of Diablo clones, some games more than others don't don't really need this system that I'm about to say that it should be introduced in this game in particular. EXP isn't shared in this game. I really just in, in specifically in this game, 
This is an action RPG where um, all jobs are not created equal. I played as the uh, the mage. There's a, there's a lore master. But essentially, there's a mage, a warrior, and a uh, all around guy like a like a thief guy. The thief guy being the ranger, the warrior guy being the uh, the dwarf, and the uh, the mage being the um, the the elf. When you're the elf, you you there's a specific path that you almost have to follow as elf in order for your team to survive. You absolutely have to have sanctuary. There's no way around it. There's no. I mean, it's not even like an option for you to go. Eh, maybe I want to go something else. No, you have to have sanctuary because there are so many. I mean, almost every fight. Almost every fight you run into has some ranged guys on the outside screwing you up, and Sanctuary blocks all ranged attacks, and later on you can upgrade it to, to heal you while you're on the inside. You get a lot of potions. You may run into some heavy situations where you just you need some you just need to hold off on your potions. And so Sanctuary helps. So I'm playing as the mage, and on so I have to put points in Sanctuary. Now but when you're gaining XP, the only way you get XP is how you um you how the, the way you kill things. You have to you have to be fighting and kill shit. You have to, the more stuff you kill, the more attacks you make, the more EXP you get. Sanctuary doesn't really help me with that. So you're sitting there essentially. You have to put points in to heal your friends, but you're not getting any benefit from it. If you know what I mean, you're just getting a pat on the back. Meanwhile, your friends are stacking attack all the way up and. Uh, and killing everything, getting all the EXP, and I'm wondering, like, but why why wouldn't EXP be shared? Why would I ever put points in Sanctuary when I could put points in Battle Mage and just be doing just as much damage and getting as much EXP? Why would I ever heal my friends except to maybe survive? And and then if you're dying a lot, why wouldn't I just say, well, suck it up and just fight better? Because you could, I mean, theoretically, you could beat this game without sanctuary. I guess it would just be a lot. You you just you wouldn't be doing anybody any favors. And I don't I don't know why it, it the game expects you to be chivalrous as one job and be the glory hound in another job. And this game focuses on teamwork a lot, and it just ma- it makes me laugh because that's not teamwork. Teamwork to me, you mean the, you mean. Teamwork when I put points in Sanctuary and heal everyone, and teamwork while you just kill everything and get all the XP. Now, in the times that I actually played a lot of this game in multiplayer, it, the combat is actually very fun. I did play; I was able to keep up EXP wise. I actually was, but it's it's not it, it's really goofy. There's a lot of things in this game I didn't understand. It's very Diablo esque. It just reminds it reminds me of a Blizzard game where I it was my number one pet pet peeve with Blizzard games is that what you think might, when you spec into something, it doesn't do, do what you think it does, and it's not as good as you think it might will be. Like, for example, I put my points in the dual wield. Like, when you're a lore master, you could dual wield a staff and a, a melee weapon. I was like, man, I'm going to do massive damage. But, no, I was doing the same amount of damage that I was with my staff. Like, with my staff, I, was, I think I was hitting, like, what is it, like, 500 damage or something like that per swing of my staff. I dual wield. I'm doing 250 with each hand. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's so Diablo. That's so Blizzard. Like, and then and then I'll go online and be like, why are you specking dual wield? You need to spec fucking uh holy flame, holy shield paladin. Throw your shield around. No, it was a hammered in. Hammered in. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna play a paladin and throw hammers. Okay, whatever. Like, okay, I understand. You know what? You keep your game, you keep mine. But like, when I pick Paladin, I think, okay, the I get my sword, my shield, I soak up all the damage, I'm kicking all the ass, and then no, it's hammered in you, moron. You know that kind of crap. All right, so all right, so so call me a noob, okay? But I'm not buying that shit. <laughs> you can, hey, I'm the noob that's gonna stay out of your fucking multiplayer. I'm the noob that's, you know, gonna watch from the sidelines play another game that you know I want to play as a certain particular class it's almost like final fantasy fucking 14 with the thaumaturge and shit oh fuck that game i'm really anal on like okay when i pick a job i want to play as that job i I don't know if that's anal but that's why else would you fucking play a game i mean i just wanted to play as a job and I and I look at the I look Thaumaturge and okay fuck it it's about Final Fantasy fourteen now, I look at Thaumaturge and fucking Conjure and I could not tell what was the healer or the damage dealer I said yo I'm out, I'm out I get back in this game and fucking they throw an Arcanist I mean you they threw they screwed up three fucking times in a row Arcanist, 
F mage guy number three. Okay, so so I I tried to do a little experiment. I tried to see. Well, okay. Um, let's say you don't really want to play. Let's say you're playing with two friends and you don't want to be the the bitch healer. You don't want to be the elf. You want you want to get all the glory. You want the exp. You want to fucking fight. So you get your friends. One of you, one of you is a ranger, and the other one is, I think, the champion. I don't know why the fuck did they call him champion. Why does call him warrior? It's so stupid. Because the champion makes you think like, well, what, what's a champion? This dwarf doesn't really seem like a champion to me. Uh, okay, well, whatever. So you be the champion. Your friend, your friend's the ranger. Let's see how the AI elf does. AI elf doesn't help me like at all, but. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if this game expected the elf to heal you all that much, or I wonder if you're just supposed to step up your game. Now, the video I have playing here is me on heroic, so I get the crap kicked out of me a few times because it's, it's heroic and stuff, and then the bomb guys you just have to learn how to dodge and everything like that. Game really game really isn't all that hard. It does focus on team like a, it, teamwork makes me fucking laugh because it's teamwork. It's the elf fucking healing people. That's teamwork. Um... Fucking uh oh! Well, there's some times where um some guy has to be, you have to be on like a catapult or a, or a bow and arrow or a ballista. I forget what's called, and you have to you have to protect the guy on the ballista while the ballista blo guy blows up everything. All right, and that's that's pretty nice. If I had to compare it to a, a fighting game, it's um it's it feels a lot like uh, Watchmen. But it's not as boring as Watchmen was. Watchmen was... I found Watchmen to be fun. My only problem with Watchmen is it, it felt... It was it was really, really, really boring. Like, it felt like you were fighting in one area forever. And the music was... The music just droned on and on and on and on. It, it, it felt like it wouldn't stop. And... But, but like I said, if you like this, if you want to try an alternative, Watchmen, Watchmen is essentially the same game where you have the, you have combos, there's no EXP, well, actually, I th actually, I think there is an EXP system in Watchmen, but I believe it's shared, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, is there an EXP system? Oh, or is there like a combo meter you have to build them? I'm sorry, it's been, it's, seriously, I haven't played Watchmen in like three days. And the Watchmen game I'm talking about, I don't know, I think there's only one Watchmen game. But I'm talking about Watchmen, the end is nigh. There's part one and two, you know, during the big fucking cash grab. Because, you know, we have to split this almighty game into two parts because it can't contain, you know? Very fun. It, but, uh, Watchmen is pretty fun. The, the only grab is that it's boring. This game doesn't suffer from the boring the boring issue. The RPG elements keep it fresh. Being able to look at your talents and being able to spec them is pretty nice, but it suffers from the Diabloism where you're 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 gonna you're gonna look on you're gonna inevitably look up online what the best build is and you're gonna follow it cookie cutter. You're not gonna do a, you're not gonna be able to create your own unique character like you would in D and D. Like that's why I feel bad. Like a lot of Diablo guys don't know what I'm talking about, but when you play D and D, when you play even even never never winner so almost falls for it never winner more than no i'm sorry dragon age falls for it more than never winner never winner i liked how you can create your own specific build and actually kick a lot of ass with it you didn't really have to follow the cookie cutter build you could min max your character if you wanted to but it, like like almost every blizzard game where you have to um but i i like how how never winner was it was just you know you pick your you could make a like a warlord bard swashbuckler guy who could talk his way out of any situation and stuff. There's some parts in the game where you can call on uh, eagle friends to come and save you or come and like attack a monster for you, like an assist. I wish they did more with this. It's it's always it's almost always the eagles. It's never anyone else. It's never like Legolas or never. It's never with <laughs> Legolas. It's never the guy. You you sometimes follow. You, sometimes you have some friends with you. Like there's a couple of uh, uh, elves that you follow or follow you called the Sons of Elrond. You never call on them for aid. And it's really weird how it's always the eagles and and then it's always. There's always parts where you go inside of a cave and the eagle goes, I can't help you here, but I can't help you here. So it's more intelligent than your average beat em up in that you have some enemies that can block your attacks. So you have to like break their block with like a kick or like a special 
block breaker and then you can attack them there's you only have a like a medium attack and a strong attack and then you when when there's an arrow that appears above your enemy when it turns yellow that means you're in range and you're ready to do the 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 heavy attack you could stun it that well actually the arrow means it's stunned and if you do a heavy attack that means you can either you have a chance to crit and take their head off or or knock them down for a while and then when they're down on the ground you can hit you can hit strong attack again and finish them off the weak attacks are like faster they break the they break the flow of the stronger attacks you know you have the typical you know the typical rock paper scissors type format every character in the game could be built to, you could you can make a ranged attack i think well actually i don't know if you can make a ranged attack dwarf dwarf seems to excel in um in melee attacks you have the ranger who's a he's more i'm sorry i say the dwarf in melee attacks i, I thought i said range the ranger has really good range attack buffs, and the the mage kind of has a, kind of has a mix of them all. The range, the mage, you can actually upgrade her range attacks a little. You can make him a battle mage. You can also give her some magic, some rudimentary magic, like as far as Lord of the Rings is concerned, like that kind of magic. It's not magic like in the way of Diablo, where you make you pretty much call meteors down on the field. You know, it's not like that. It's just, it's very subtle magic. There's like an AOE knockback move. There's an AOE. Um, there's a, there's a, I believe a chain lightning type of move. No shared EXP. Um, the, uh, the constant looking at your loot. And, uh, you can respec in this game. So that's good. The, the microphone thing was really annoying. My friends and I use Skype almost all the time. And we found that, like, I had to, I couldn't, there's a way to rig it up to where you can have your microphone, you can have it, you can have Lord of the Rings hooked up to a dummy microphone that doesn't exist, so then you could use Skype to actually talk, but I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. I guess I don't have, I don't have a dummy microphone, so I had to turn off Skype and just listen to, uh, the, actually, I, I muted myself on Skype, so I, and then I, Listen to Skype on the game. I forgot how I do it. Did it? I just put up with the with the echo. I guess I don't care. So um, anyway, that's my that's my little my my five cents on these games.